A mark is a product of history and as such can only exist in the present. The past is fixed, indifferent, and never fully accessible. There is even a saying that calls the past a foreign country. They do things differently there. will always be impenetrable, but undeniable. The ultimate origins of the people referred to by these markers are uncertain. There are Siouan people. Among these Siouan peoples were two groups who would enduringly be referred to as the Saponi and Tutelo. Now the Iroquois have always called them uh, Tutelo, and we don't know why. Nobody's been able to uh, decipher the, the meaning of Tutelo. We're tempted, Kathy and I, to suggest that it's Tupelo, you know, uh, which is a, a gum tree. The Saponi and Tudlo use the name Yesa when identifying themselves. The earliest place the Saponi and Tudlo are known to have lived was in the southeast, specifically the Virginia, Carolina, Piedmont area. There are a few Siouan groups who bear the distinction of at first remaining in isolation from European contact for several generations. By the beginning of the 18th century, things had changed. Europeans acquired more land and began to transform it to match their assumptions about what a civilized landscape should look like. To remove themselves from increasing white pressures, they decided to gradually migrate northward in small bands to seek the protection of the Iroquois League in Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania woods to the south of Iroquois made for a buffer zone and extended hunting ground for the Haudenosaunee. Folklore from the Cayuga Nation originating from this area describes their lifestyle and status. In this oral tradition, the Tudelo and Saponi are characterized as being able to transform themselves into mice. The poetry of how they were trying to hide out and not, and not be discovered. And so they would turn themselves in mice. What we would understand that is they would act like mice, staying un be undercover, trying not to be seen. The mice would be a, a metaphor for how they were trying to escape detection.
1753, the Cayuga formally adopted the Saponi and Tudelo into the Haudenosaunee, and so the Eastern Siouans now found themselves living in the domain of their former aggressors. But dependent tribes of the Haudenosaunee didn't just receive martial protection from their sponsors, but also promises of preserving their native customs and freedom of religion. The Haudenosaunee weren't just a powerful and very encompassing confederacy, but maintained a political organization that could accommodate assimilation. And the Iroquois made him a nice deal. He says, okay, this is your land. You could farm. And if we're anybody, if you're attacked, we'll come and help you. If we're attacked, you come and help us. You can keep your language and keep your religion. The principal Tudelo village was located at Corioganel, three miles southwest of contemporary Ithaca, New York. Somewhere here. They had nice log cabins, log houses. They had fields, extensive fields. They had orchards. You know, and they had some livestock. They go to the lake and fish, get eel, and uh, plenty of hunting. So the story is that they they reconstituted themselves. 